slide blog we're going to combine weeks one and two uh, here in in this lesson and what I've done is I recorded a little chord progression that um, I think it's ain't nobody's business uh, it's probably a whole bunch of other songs um, but uh, and then I employed the the idea of playing thirds and sixths as guide tone lines over the chord progression so let me show you the chord progression first Chord progression is A, whoops, uh, A major, then uh, C sharp seven, right? So you can see it a little bit better here. I'll get rid of that slide. So C sharp seven, D seven, D di D sharp diminished. Then it went A, F sharp seven, uh, B, E seven. chord progression because uh, I like that C sharp and then I like the diminished chord and gives us an opportunity to um, oh I don't know get some different sounds in there outside of just a three chord wonder which of course I do love um, okay I can't remember exactly what I did on the intro but I think what happened was that I began um, with playing thirds um, and just trying to play simple comping ideas where I'm not moving the voices very far um, and see if I can get through the chord progression. So I think it's somewhere, I started on A here where I'm playing the third and the fifth and then when I went to C sharp all I needed to do was raise that note on the second string and there's my C sharp. I've got the root and third. That goes up a half step to D and then um, the D sharp diminished chord all I did was drop the note on the third string down, uh, the old fretting behind the slide technique. Right, then back to one. Um, I can't remember how I did the turnaround, but here's an idea. F sharp, I'm playing F sharp, and then the flat seven of the chord. Got some nice grind there. Uh, so root, flat seven lower note collapses down to the third of B. So I'm playing the third and the fifth of B. And then E7 I went which is basically like a flat seven and a nine to the root and then one. So, so uh, again just to recap what I'm doing is I'm playing thirds and I'm just trying to keep the voices uh, tight and close. And I think the second time through, I employed sixths. So I played A here at the 10th and 11th fret. This is C sharp. I'm, I'm imagining this shape right here. And I'm playing the flat seven of the fifth, up a half step to D seven. Um, and then I play this kind of diminished idea, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm playing the second and fourth strings, muting the, the third string in between, and I think I started where I had the flat seven on top and the flat nine on the bottom, and I just moved those in minor thirds. Right, so I'm at 13th fret, 10, uh, seven, Four, right, and then our turnaround would be uh, A, F sharp. Notice I just had to move A up to A sharp, and we were good. 
And then um, I think I might have implied B minor that second time where I played. Uh, this is, I'm playing the second and fourth strings at the 12th fret, and that would be kind of implying the root and the minor third of B. And then to get E7, I'm fretting behind the slide here at the ninth fret. That's the third of E7, and I have the slide playing the fourth string, playing the flat seven. And I just collapse those melodies in, right? And that gives me one again, so. Um, anyway, just to recap, what I did was I took those two ideas that we talked about in the first lesson um, and second lesson, and I applied those to a chord progression where I tried to play guide tone lines and employ the slide as much as possible um, to, you know, and, and uh, to comp the chords. Again, um, or what I should say too is the reason I'm doing this again is I am gonna solo in this trio format. And once I start soloing, there's nobody playing chords for me, and I, I will try to kind of throw in some chords and even play some chords with my, my fingers, but the idea is that I'm really deliberately aware of how the notes that I'm playing relate to the chords that are happening at any given moment in the song, which is precisely why this activity is invaluable because it's teaching you all the different chord tones and no matter where you are you can grab a third or a sixth to imply whatever chord is sounding and your bass player's got the bass note and so you have a, a three note chord and it works pretty well. Um, there you have it. So uh, if you have any questions about this slide blog or about slide in general you can uh, visit me on Instagram uh, Bell Tower Guitars or Bell Tower Guitars on Facebook or just uh, make a comment down below here at YouTube and uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, good luck.